Hey guys, this is Awesome John22 coming in today with another review, and as you can see right here in front of you, um, nothing has changed in regards to my setup here. And uh, this guy is not a Combiner Wars figure. That is because the supplies, for lack of a better term, the components that I ordered to make up my new reviewing area will not arrive until later this week after I, you know, need to, re to record these videos since I don't have time later in the week. So yeah, I still do want to do the Combiner Wars uh, line due diligence, so I am again putting them off. This has the added benefit of possibly uh, meaning that my next order of Combiner Wars stuff will be in, meaning that I will have the complete Superion to review and not Superion with three limbs and a Stunticon. So, um, there's that. It's not exactly how I pictured these reviews going, but I think it'll round out to be fairly acceptable. So instead today we're going to take a look at some more R.I.D. 2015 figures, and uh, hopefully my backdrop holds together. Like, literally, there's you can't see it from this side, but there's like literally tape holding this thing together. But yeah, um, today we're taking a look at Warrior Class, Decepticon Steeljaw, the, I guess, leader of the team this time around, and this is like totally... Uh, it's supposed to be. Yeah, um, he's kind of this werewolf looking guy, and I really like him as a werewolf. Honestly, I really like wolves and dogs. Um, in fact, with the way that the character designs are going, I may end up rooting for the Decepticons this time around. But that is entirely beside the point. You can see him here in his robot mode, but that's not where we start things. So let's get this guy transformed up through the magic of jump cuts. And here we have Steeljaw in his vehicle mode, and I don't know if this is supposed to be based on a real vehicle or not. It doesn't really resemble anything I know of. It's got kind of this, like, off-roadish look to it, but it's clearly only like a two-seater car. I don't really know. I don't really get it. I mean, it looks cool, don't get me wrong. Uh, I particularly like the front end. It looks tough, for lack of a better word, with a nice um, topographed or Decepticon symbol there that looks like this is the first time I've actually noticed it. It looks like it's, like, crossed out. I guess that's because they're, like, renegades or whatever. And nice, uh, orange paint on the headlights. Uh, the wheels have this really cool, tough, rugged-looking design to them. And there's this really nice, uh, reflective, almost metallic marbling running through the plastic of the entire figure. Uh, nice black on the windscreens. Uh, very little paint on the back. Well, no paint on the back, I guess because the marbling is in the plastics that I actually paint. And you can see some robot bits here. You can, We'll get to that in a minute. Overall, though, I mean, it's a pretty nice-looking figure. I don't know why those, are, that red, those red bits are there. I guess it's entirely for robot mode. Now, it's a nice-looking vehicle mode. I have some issues with it. These side panels here um, like to pop out, and I can't get these two halves of the front end, and now it's just going to stay popped out for the rest of eternity. I can get these two halves of the front end to slot together secure, securely. You can see the slot there. It just doesn't want to grip, and I can't figure out why. Otherwise, though, it's standard deluxe size. Rolls very nicely, and I, I really like the color of it. It it looks, I don't know, kind of wolfish, and that's... I mean, he's a werewolf. He's supposed to look kind of wolfish. You can see the Decepticon sticker on the windshield with that same uh, code ring thing for the video game, which I have not played yet, and probably never will. And his weapon, his little claw, which we saw in the shots of robot mode, does store right here on the top. And surprisingly doesn't look ridiculous there. I actually kind of like it there. But yeah, like all the R.I.D. guys, pretty Pretty simple, pr but pretty effective. And so, uh, let's see if that holds up in the transformation. Uh, first, what we're going to do, we're going to come to the front here and just kind of split this just a little bit and then fold these out like so. I guess, yeah, they go about that far like that. And then we're going to rotate them, yeah, this way. And those will be his legs, clearly. And uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. There's stuff to say about those. Next, we're going to come. Actually, bring the camera up. Come up here and uh, see if I can do this right. We're going to separate. There's a little. 
it's hard to see. There's a little tab right under there that kind of holds this section in place. We're going to kind of lower it down and bring it out on both sides, like so. And come around like this. And uh, let's, oh, let's bring his tail down first, because that's how we make clearance. Uh, we're going to bring this whole section down. And uh, bring that up. I'm, I'm, I'm missing a step here somewhere, I think. This is not... Yeah, there we go. It kind of accordions down like that. Then we bring it all down. And then these come up, and they don't... I mean, you can hear there's, like, kind of a little click, but it's not very secure. Uh, I mean, it's not bad, but it's not, it's not great either. Now, finally, and this, this part actually worries me a little bit. We're going to... Just grab this and pull until his, uh, see if you can see it, his arms slide on this little slidey joint here. And then fold these up. And again, they don't actually clip in place. There's a little clip there, but they don't actually attach to it. They're still loose. And um, if you didn't get this arm pulled down far enough, his arm will now not bend. So... Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. It's not going to bend for me now. I will I will try to fix that off screen in a second. But yeah, we're going to do the same thing, of course, on both sides. And this one's also not bending. Yeah, give me just a moment to try to take care of that. Alright, so I have gotten them to bend. What you kind of have to do is you kind of have to pull down as you're bending it forward because it's on this... I don't know if ratchet's the right word, but there's, if we zoom in here, you can see there are these little grooves, these little textured grooves. And it, I understand the point of it, I understand what they were going for here, but with th these gray pieces being so thin, and this little nub for the this pin to sit in being so thin, it just scares me to death that it's going to break. And I, so I don't like transforming this guy at all, which is why. I fumbled a couple of times. I literally transformed this guy once before now. As for standing, he has the bumblebee feet that are just part of his car that doesn't really offer much support. I mean, there's even this like raised texture down here and everything, and no heel. So you have to bring his, his tail down and let him kind of rest on his tail as well just to get him to stand properly. And, uh... Even then, it really helps to kind of hunch him forward, which, I mean, I guess it makes him look more animalistic, but I should have the option of posing my figure however I want. Now his tail's not even helping, really, at this point. There we go. I should have the option of posing my figure however I want, and yet the engineering of this figure prevents me from posing it the way I want to, and that really irks me. And I love the design of this guy. Looking at him, you can see, uh, I mean, not a whole diverse, huge diversity amongst the paint apps. We've got some silver there in the abdomen and uh, in his face sculpt, which, let's see if I can focus on it a little better. There we go. He's got these really cool yellow optics, really cool uh, silver face. He's got the gray plastic, which also appears to have some semi-metallic marbling in it, so pretty nice. Then this black, which matches the black on the front end of his vehicle. So overall pretty nice. Um, red, the red paint apps are now on his shoulders, by the way. So uh, pretty nice in terms of appearance, and he does technically have a decent range of motion, but yeah, I, I forgot about this. His arms are actually stopped right there. They can't go further than that because there's this little tab in the way. And I I might be able to sand that off and get full range of motion, but I don't really I don't really want to. I'm I'm kind of worried about what it would do. I'm kind of worried this whole thing will just fall apart if I touch it wrong. Now his head rotates, but because of the angle of it, he ends up kind of just looking like he's tilting his head. And his tail does have a few points of articulation, but like I said, you kind of have to use his tail 
most of the time to help balance him. There we go. So, yeah. Not getting a whole lot of posing out of that. And uh, I'm not going to show off any more of the posability in his arms. He rotates above the elbows uh, at the shoulder. I just don't want to risk, you know, messing something up. But I will show off his weapon. It does slot in here. Now it looks like he's got this big silver wolverine claw. And it looks pretty cool. I'm not going to say it doesn't. That's pretty much what this figure does, though. It looks cool. It just isn't functional at all. Um, in terms of a size comparison, here he is with Bumblebee. And here, he is next to a fairly standard Voyager class figure. Um, I don't have Combiner Wars Optimus Prime handy, or I would have used him. Um, you can see... He's not a terrible size, but because of the way his knees are like bent default, he has that chicken leg thing going on that was a big deal with the movie Decepticons for a long time, and uh, ends up actually being shorter than Bumblebee, and I think that's really a mistake that they should not have let go through in the design process. He should be bigger than Bumblebee if he's supposed to be Bumblebee's nemesis here. But hey, I don't design the toys. I just critique them. And, uh, yeah, let's get these guys out of the way, first of all. And uh, in terms of this guy, I really hate saying this, but I, I don't recommend picking him up. I would, I mean, if you want, if you're a completionist or you want the supposed leader of the Decepticons this time around, I mean, really go for it. I'm still fiddling with the guy's pose, and it's not like it's going to matter. He's just going to sit like that anyway. I mean, he's he, this is like the equivalent of Megatron in this series. Unless Megatron ends up showing up later and I have to uh, put my foot in my mouth. But this guy is, as far as we know right now, the equivalent of Megatron in the series. And I just, aside from his basic design, I don't like him. So honestly, what I would do is I would wait and see if they come out with one of those simplified voyager size three-step changer guys, like the Grimlock that I mentioned offhandedly in my Warrior Class Grimlock review. As long as it has a similar look in robot mode to this, I think that would actually probably be the better way to go, because even though this guy technically has more articulation, he also kind of doesn't, if you get what I'm saying. He's, he's basically a static figure, like that one would be. So, I mean, you, you see where I'm going with this. But guys, that's pretty much it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it, because I certainly enjoyed making it. I'm sorry that I can't recommend this guy, because I like the look of him a lot. However, we are going to be taking a look at another figure later this week, which I'm going to film right now, which I have a better opinion of uh, from the same line. So let's, uh, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and move on to that. Yeah, this has been Awesome John 22, and I will talk to you guys later.